Everyone, welcome to the Tuesday, February 21st, 2017 edition of VR News. Also happens to be the day of my birth. So a rare second cheers, guys, to me and anybody else sharing it with me. All right, let's talk about gaming VR, specifically Dirt Rally. If you asked me, you know, how I felt about the state of virtual reality racing games, I would say absolutely healthy. <laughs> Dirt Rally, I can comfortably say, is in my top 20 VR games, along with Assetto Corsa and Project Cars. Cockpit VR racing is pretty well represented, considering it's not even been a full year since launch. If you're a fan of racing games on the PC or console, you've got a steering wheel and you've kind of been sitting on the sidelines for VR, you have as close, closer than anybody else who's into other genres to having killer apps at your disposal. Times three between those three games. So definitely. Now, Dirt Rally we hear is coming to PlayStation VR. And it's a pretty damn good bundle. It's a $43 US bundle. But listen to what it gives you. It gives you, of course, the base game, three mini DLC packs, as well as the PlayStation VR add-on. You get all of that together, simply let it kind of install in the background. You compare that to the 60 bucks that you're paying on Oculus and Steam. Granted, it's included a lot of that functionality. At the end of the day, you're still sa saving money. Hell, put that towards a really good racing wheel. Next game, Air Mech Command. This was one of the launch titles for Rift. Well, it's been announced today that it's going to get touch support finally, and it's an RTS strategy style game. It's also going to be get, getting Vive support. So kind of with Dirt Rally, PlayStation folks are going to be able to enjoy that. So it's nice to see these games crossing over. Uh, Air Mech being another one. And the next one, probably the biggest crossover. And I'm going to say this right now. This is directly to you guys with an Oculus Rift. Maybe you've tried it with the workarounds raw data. But if you haven't, or you just want a smooth, clean gaming experience, raw data is still in the top three for me. Virtual reality games, period across all the platforms. If you are into shooter games, whatever type, even if you don't like wave-based games, if you see this on sale, grab it. Raw data coming to Oculus Rift and Touch. Uh, no firm date or cost other than, like I said, it's going to support the controllers. Grab it. Co-op on that is a hell of a lot of fun but even the single player games for being early access and being, you know, not a company that has a lot of gaming history. They did a fantastic job. It was polished essentially from day one with a lot of content being added on in the form of classes, items, abilities. Let's just say, aside from it being in my top three, it's been a good investment because it's given me a lot back. Next up, game called Hacker, or sorry, a hacker game called Darknet. <laughs> I was going to twist that around. Is going to see a PlayStation VR release on March 7th. So if that's a game that appeals to you and you are a PlayStation VR user, keep an eye out for that title. Talk about the day of crossovers. I should have probably labeled that. I, I still may, but Tilt Brush, which has pretty much been synonymous with the HTC Vive, right? Coming to Oculus with touch support today. So if you're an artist, and this is the same as with the raw data, but for the art person, you haven't had an opportunity to try that, but you like the offerings that you have on your Rift, give this application a shot. Uh, my hunch would be you're not going to regret it. You're going to enjoy the hell out of Tilt Brush. Link for that below. It's from cnet.com, uh, just in the description. 
All right, so according to Valve, let's kind of temper the excitement a little bit with a bit more of a somber announcement. But you know what? You could argue at this point we're okay with it because we've accepted it. But according to Valve, only 30 of the 1,000 plus, and we know a lot of cruft, the 1,000 plus VR apps have made in excess of $250,000. US dollars. Sounds okay. And if you add all those 30 up, you've got tens of million, but yeah, no, not quite. But you've got many millions. And yeah, so to say that it's fantastic, no, that would be overselling it. But with our, you know, kind of reduced expectations based on the sales figures that we've been hearing for the last couple of months, uh, yeah, to be expected. I do think that's going to pick up, especially with some of this crossover stuff happening, games on the horizon. We talked about Fallout 4 the other day, etc. There's a lot more. The three that Valve are working on, which hopefully they've got one or more of ready this year. That would be awesome. All right, next news story. This is an interview that Road to VR had with one of the Sony PlayStation VR folks. And he is Richard Marks, technically Dr. Richard Marks. He does have a doctorate. He is the head of PlayStation Magic Lab. If you know anything about his history or the, the history of that lab, you'll know that it was essentially a position and a department that he developed. He's instrumental for it. He came to Sony back in 1999 to investigate the use of live video input for gaming and to develop interactive user experiences. If that doesn't sound like a shoe in for VR, I don't know what does, but obviously it does. That's why he's around. That's why he's the person in charge for that. If you still don't know who he is, that's okay. Just know that he created or was in on the uh, iToy, eye cameras, and the Move controllers. Now, while the Move controllers are admittedly the most primitive of the bunch, they're still functional. And considering they came out at a time when VR was not on the horizon, you know, but still are able to cater to the tracking of VR does at least indicate that, you know what, that initial design had some stretch. It had some flexibility. So very cool, a uh, good, interesting interview. I'm gonna touch on just a couple of the things that he talked about. So he was asked, do you think VR's killer app, uh, what traits do you think VR's killer app needs to have? And he talked about not believing that there's a single killer app for VR, that it's just too broad of a medium to just have one app that defines it. And he kind of gets into genres. And I agree with that. Just rewind a couple minutes when I talked about the racing games. If you're a racing enthusiast, you're not thinking cupboards are bare. You're thinking, wow, this is the first year and I've got three decent virtual reality choices. And that's probably how this is going to unfold. It's going to be chipping away at it genre by genre, game by game to grow this. So I like that response. He was also asked uh, if he had to make a bet, which sector of VR would he predict as the place where that first killer app emerges? And, you know, he says the entertainment sector, gaming. Well, that's kind of where he is at. He knows that best. But I would agree, I think gaming has probably done the most, even though we're seeing it emerge, you know, medical, uh, international space station, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Even though we're seeing all of that, it's still fundamentally a technology brought about by gamers, for gamers, at least initially, this time around. And then the last question he was at, asked, do you think that killer app is going to launch in 2017. He said he strongly believes it will introduce a hero app. So he's not ready to call it a killer one, but a decent one. And it's going to leverage co-presence and new levels of interaction beyond what we've seen 
to date. So if that comes to pass, hell yeah. I would be very impressed. That would be nice to see in 2017. Next story, Samsung's next VR steps. Uh, there's also an augmented reality step, but you can check that out in the link below. There were so many news items today, I wanted to just rein it in a little bit. So we'll talk about the three things they have on the horizon that are directly VR related. The first one is Valdas, which is a 360 degree depth camera and mobile app for VR headsets. You can basically scan your home using the camera and transfer that and basically walk through your own house virtually, which is pretty cool. And that's probably got some other uses as well. We haven't even entertained yet. Trav Er, another I I got to say, I still dislike the need that these companies think they need to play on the VR thing. But anyways, they have, so I'm going to respect that and go with it. This is Traver or Tra VR Er. It's a 360 degree video platform intended to give users a peek at a prospect of holiday before they go. So you can visit famous landmarks. You're planning a trip to Rome. Well, you know what? Check out Trevi Fountain, check out the Colosseum, check out some other things and be prepared so that when you actually go there, you can visit those places because you've kind of worked out the logistics. Pretty cool. And then last, the third, Relumino, which is uh, being billed as a smart aid intended to help the visually impaired watch TV without the need for expensive aids. It works with Samsung's Gear VR and enables them to read books and watch TV with more clarity than they'd have otherwise. And it essentially works by using a mobile app, you insert that into the Gear VR, and it enhances the quality of visuals and even the text on the screen. It can also remap blind spots. Very cool. Lots of potential there, again, for those with visual impairments. All right, next news story, Google can recreate your face for better mixed reality footage. Now, mixed reality is something I want to flirt with. I haven't talked about it for a while, but essentially what that is, if you don't know, it's take one of my quick looks as an example. So initially I did them and you saw me playing with the background around me. Now I've kind of green screened those. Well, mixed reality is yet another step in, in that viewers will see you in the actual game playing. So if you're playing Elite Dangerous, for example, you're going to be in the cockpit. And when you're moving on your throttle or your HOTAS, like your stick, your in-game avatar is doing the same thing. It'll look like you're in sync with the you in the game, which is pretty cool. Now, what Google is doing is they want to recreate your face. So what they're doing is basically a transparency layer. So you'll be able to see through the Rift Vive, whatever the HMD happens to be, and see that person's digital face. Now, there's a video, check it out. I gotta admit, I kind of chuckled and laughed because it was actually kind of creepy. And not creepy in a horrific way, just creepy in a, it'll be hard to take serious way because it definitely pokes around in that whole uncanny valley, you know, where something seems off about somebody because it's kind of that goofy, whatever expression they had when that picture was taken, that's kind of there permanently. And I believe they've got some frame variants. You can take a few pictures. Anyways, check out the link. You'll see what I mean. And love to get your thoughts on that. Next story. Man loses more than 50 pounds playing a VR game. And yes, I can hear you now. And looks like you found those 50 pounds, Epics. Hardy har har. Hardy har. But uh, this fella, his name is Job Stauffer, admits he was unhealthy and definitely weighed a hell of a lot more than me. The gent was over 300 pounds. And it got to the point where his doctor was basically, you know, not being polite anymore. You have to, Job, get this under control, rein it the hell in. So what he did is basically started using virtual reality apps. 
And we've talked about that quite a few times here. Sometimes we joke about it. Other times we're very serious. We have viewers like Chris Brower, who literally makes it part of his daily cardio routine. He does his audio shield and quiver. And if you see how he plays those, you'll get that it's a workout. So yeah, I have no doubt that's what happened. The sweat and everything else aside, there's workarounds. You could figure it out. It is a good idea and something I need to be doing more of as well. And then the last story, guys. Kind of hinted at it earlier. Talked about the International Space Station. I am a huge space geek. Those of you who've seen more than a few of my videos probably know that. To the point, look, literally, if I won a lottery that was over 20 million US, I would probably pay the 20 million to be able to go to the International Space Station like Richard Garriott did for a week. That's how into space I am, just to give you an idea. Now, French astronaut uh, Thomas Pesk, he's basically going to be using a rift. Now, 360 degree content is not unheard of. In fact, there are Russian and uh, astronauts of other nationalities regularly providing high quality 360 degree content which by the way if you're into space and you haven't checked out yet check it out especially the one which is an exterior shot and it's literally you could be in your spacesuit hurtling around the earth at you know 30,000 kilometers an hour it's pretty damn impressive and what they're doing now, and Thomas is going to be the first to use this, is sending a rift on board. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but the hurdles that they had to go through as an organization just to get the Oculus Rift up there, well, let's just say it was a lot of work. It's all part of an experiment called GRASP, which, of course, is an acronym for Gravitational References for Sensimotor Performance. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so basically the Dragon cargo ship is going to include the Rift as part of its uh, bounty. Thomas will get that and begin his testing. So very interested in that. I hope they live stream some of that stuff or make it available. That would be cool. All right, guys, off to do some gaming. That uh, Merville game on PlayStation VR. I want to check that out. As always, guys, cheers. <laughs>